All right, guys, back with the trig. People been asking for help. I'm just going to post these work through videos of today's assignments. So here we go. Um, these, this is the word problems, angles of elevation and depression. Uh, it says an escalator lifts people to the second floor, 25 feet above the first floor. So understanding what that looks like, above is going to be a vertical number, 25 feet above the first floor, vertical. The escalator rises at a 25 degree angle. That's an angle of elevation. It's rising at an angle of 25 degrees. How far does a person travel if they take the escalator from the first floor to the second floor? So they're going from floor one to floor two. How far would they actually travel? That would be the hypotenuse, right? Escalators are like stairs, guys. Not elevator, escalator. So the escalator, if you're traveling on the escalator, you're going along the hypotenuse here. So this would be opposite hypotenuse. This would be the sine of 25 equals opposite 25 over hypotenuse x. So it would be x equals, right? If x is down low, they switch places, you know. <clears throat> so x equals 25 over the sine of 25. So 25 over sine 25, I get, and I'm rounding to the nearest thousandths. Yep, there we go. 59.155. Boom. Next question. Sahil is making a ramp to try out his car for a Pinewood Derby. The ramp support forms a right angle. Okay. The base is 12 feet long. The height is 7 feet long. What is the angle of elevation, and how long is the ramp? So those are the parts we're looking for. Round both to the nearest thousands. Angle of elevation, if I'm looking for the angle, I know it's going to be inverse something. This is opposite adjacent. So I know it's going to, I know that x is going to equal inverse tangent, opposite over adjacent. So when I type that in, inverse tangent, 7 over 12, I get 30.256. Uh, so there's the first answer. The second answer is I want y, the hypotenuse. Well, if I know two legs, then I can just do Pythagorean theorem. That would be the square root of 7 squared plus 12 squared. which is the square root of 193, but they want us to round to the nearest thousandths. So that would be 13.892. Got him. Sarah's flying her kite above a field at the end of a 65 meter string. All right, so we got Sarah flying a kite. Boom. So the string would be the hypotenuse, right? You're flying a kite. That's where the string would be. The angle of elevation above her hands is 70 degrees. How high above Sarah's hands? So that's what we're looking for. Is this the height above the ground? No, because her hands are not on the ground, or at least they don't say that. So like if her height, like if her hands were three feet in the air, then that means that the kite would be x plus 3 above the ground. But that's not this problem. It just said how far above her hands. So we just need to draw a horizontal line out from her hands and get that height. So this is going to be opposite hypotenuse. The sine of 70 equals opposite over hypotenuse. x is up high. you got to multiply. So it's going to be 65 times the sine of 70. And I get 61.080. We loving it? I hope so. I know I'm loving it. All right, from a plane, number four. A plane flying due east 265 above sea level. So we got a plane in the air here. It's above sea level. That's 265. That's a vertical number. 
angle of depression to two ships on the same side of the plane is 35 and 25. So we've talked about this some, guys. Um, so you could draw angle of depression triangles. It could look something like this. That's fine. And so like you could, the, let's see, the, the closer person would be 35 degrees. You know, you would have a height of 265, and you could find that distance. You could. That's all fine. But we don't need, like, okay, I think it makes more sense for most people if we do an angle of elevation. Remember that if I have an angle of depression looking at some object, right, that's depression, their angle of elevation is going to be the same number. So like if this was 10 degrees, then this is 10 degrees because they're alternate interior angles and they use parallel lines. So the plane's depression is equal to the ship's elevation. So I'm going to use elevation. I think it's a little bit easier to understand. So we have a right triangle here. And we have an angle of elevation. Well, I'm going to put the bigger number closer. Remember, we've talked about that in class. So it's 265, and that would be x. So the distance, the horizontal distance to the first ship is x. So that would be the tangent of 35 equals 265 over x. So x is 265 divided by the tangent of 35. That's how far away, horizontally, horizontally, the first ship is. The second ship is going to be farther out there, but it's the exact same scenario. And I told you guys, if you're struggling, draw the triangle separately. But here's like friend one, this is friend two, this would be 25 degrees. But pull it out. This is what we got. We got a situation where it's 25 degrees, we have a height of 265, and I'll call this y. Basically the exact same situation we just did. The tan of 25 would equal 265 over y. So y equals 265 over tan 25. So the final answer, right, if this whole thing is y, right, and what we want is the distance between the ships, we want this distance, we would have to do y minus x. So in my calculator, I'm going to do y minus x. That's 265 over tan 25 minus 265 over tan 35. And I get 189. And what does it say to round to? Round to the nearest thousandths. 189.835. There we go. If you mess up and you accidentally did the small minus big, you would just get the negative version of that number. That just means you didn't understand which one was farther and which one was closer. A lot of people think the 35 one is farther because it's a bigger number, but that's not how depression works. We've talked about that. You can, you can look at other videos, but that's not how it works. So if you mix that up, it's just negative. That just means you mixed it up. Fix it. An airplane takes off 200 yards in front of a 60-foot building. So we've actually done this problem in another video, if you remember. But it's going to be an angle of elevation. We are 200 yards, which I'm going to convert to feet. That'd be 600 feet. I don't care about units until they're different. That's just my personal thing. I know science teachers are going to hate me for that. But if I need to change this to 600 feet so that I have feet in both situations. So it, an airplane takes off 600 feet in front of a 60-foot tall building. What is the angle of elevation that the airplane must take? Well, that's going to be opposite adjacent. That's going to be inverse tangent of opposite over adjacent. And that's going to be inverse tangent, opposite over adjacent. I get 5 point, let's see, what do we round to? Nearest thousandths again. That's going to be 5 point. 711. There we go. Standing on a cliff 380 meters above sea level, Varun sees a ship and measures the angle of depression. Nine. Second ship, five. How far apart? Same question we did a second ago. So go back to the other one if you want to kind of see a little bit, but I'm going to use elevation. So the closer ship is nine degrees. I'm 380 meters above sea level. And I can find that distance, I'll call it x. 
So that would be the tangent of 9 equals 380 over x. So x equals 380 divided by the tangent of 9. The second ship is a little bit farther. Angle of depression to the second ship is 5. Yep. So this would be an angle of elevation of 5. This distance would be what I call y. So basically I'm doing 380. I'm trying to find y with that being 5. So that would be the tangent of 5 equals 380 over y. So y equals 380 over tangent 5. So how do I get the distance between the ships? You guessed it, y minus x. So I don't want to rewrite all that, but I'm going to type it in. y is 380 over tangent 5 minus 380 over tangent 9, y minus x. And I get 1944.194. And if I take a look, nearest thousands, all right, we got it. All right, that's all those problems. Hopefully that helped.